Hey guys, it's Noel here. Welcome to Tech Tuesdays at In Flight Video. Tech Tuesdays is the show where I talk to you all about the um, equipment that I use to create the full flight videos, the websites that I use, um, basically everything that goes on behind the scenes in order to make um, full flight videos for In Flight Video. Now today is a topic, uh, the, or the first of a three part topic that I'm going to be creating for you, um, all about air traffic control. And I know that it is the most most asked question on all of in-flight video out of all the questions that I get the most common one by far is how I get the ATC the air traffic control to overlay onto my videos and it's taken me a little bit of um, kind of planning to get to this stage where I can actually do a video about it because as you'll see there's so many different variables that I can use to create air traffic control depending on the flights I'm taking what I'm doing and things like that um, so it's kind of been a bit awkward to try and get one guide together on how to do it. So for that reason, I'm going to be creating this over three videos, showing you three different sites that I use, three different ways I use of getting air traffic control. Um, and then a fourth video, which will basically show how I put all of those together to create the um, to create the air traffic control overlay on the videos, basically. So essentially, this is a, an ATC masterclass from in-flight video, if you can call it that. Um, I'm going to show you how I get the air traffic control, some websites that I use, and hopefully you'll be a little bit more wiser after I've shown these um, videos to you and after you've seen these videos um, as to how I make the air traffic control overlay onto the videos. So let's get started right away. Now the first site that I'm going to be talking to you about is one that you are probably all completely aware of. It's a brilliant website called Live ATC and it is to be honest, it's one of the, the first way that I, the first videos that I did with air traffic control. I got the air traffic control from a live ATC. I did that for about six or seven years until I started finding other ways to get other airports on as well that weren't covered by Live ATC. Uh, so this website is uh, the URLs up here liveatc.net. Um, it is a it's been around for years and you're probably aware of it as an AvGeek as an aviation enthusiast. It's um, quite a awesome website really. Um, a quick overview for those of you who are not aware, Live ATC basically allows you to listen to air traffic control. That's the um, communications between the aircraft and the air traffic control towers um, and en route centres and things like that all around the world. So you can actually listen to live air traffic um, through Live ATC through the website and through their mobile apps that they have um, for iOS and Google Play as well, which they are paid apps, but for me they are well worth um, paying for because they're just I just use them all the time, really, so I can listen to it on the go. Um, there's new feeds being added all the time as well. I mean, I'll go a little bit through the coverage, but the main thing I'm going to talk to you about is how I pull off the archives, which is something that I know a lot of you aren't aware of, um, and it will give you an idea of how I put those into the videos as well. So let's get started. As you can see, we've got a list of all the, um, these are the latest um, feeds that they have. I mean, this is just in the last couple of weeks. Um, they've added all of these in. So as you can see, it's growing all the time as well. Uh, if we go to browse live ATC feeds down here on the left hand side, I've got this already open for you. This gives you a really awesome map of um, all of the live ATC feeds around the world. And as you can see, there's some parts of the world where there is blanket coverage of live ATC. Some parts where there's not so much coverage and they're the parts that I sometimes struggle with with the air traffic control and there are some notable exceptions here. For example, if we zoom in here into Europe, um, you will see that the United Kingdom is notably absent, which being somebody who's based in the UK, that is a bit of an issue really. Um, there are other websites that I will go to in the other videos that I do and there's other ways that I get air traffic control, so all is not necessarily lost. Um, but essentially there's a law from the 1940s which uh, prohibits anybody from broadcasting air traffic control transmissions um, and obviously the world has moved on since the 1940s. The British law unfortunately hasn't and we're not allowed to listen to them because we might hear something that we're not allowed to listen to. Um, so enough about that. Germany is another one. Um, you can see Germany is um, also um, notably absent and missing from the live ATC feeds. But there's other airports in Europe that are fantastic and have really good coverage. Uh, for example, here in Europe we have the two airports that I try to fly through the most um, because of their coverage on live ATC. You'll no notice that basically a lot of the flights that I take um, have ATC and to be honest I often fly through Amsterdam and Zurich airports because they have fantastic live ATC coverage and I know that I can generally go back and get all the um, archive for air traffic control that I need from them for the videos. Um, if we hover over to Amsterdam Schiphol airport over here 
look at that there is a list of all the frequencies that are currently broadcasting from Amsterdam on live ATC there is everything um, approach arrival departure ground even uh, operations tow traffic as well company channels everything is on there so I'm actually flying through Amsterdam next week again and on those flights I'm going to be using this as a guide basically to uh, this this was the reason I've decided to fly through Amsterdam really for that flight was because of the um, live ATC coverage and hopefully it will make for a couple of good videos for you. Zurich is another airport that has fantastic live ATC coverage if we go down here to that's uh, to Zurich again you've got all of the local frequencies and en route frequencies as well so these two airports between them you can get to pretty much anywhere in Europe and I like to try and fly through those because they do have some good footage and some good coverage there as well quite a lot up in Scandinavia as well Dublin's another one that has some um, live ATC coverage um, I'm actually heading to Riga um, in a couple of weeks time and they've got I was just checking that out today actually they've got some fantastic coverage as well here that I can um, call upon when I do my video so I'm heading Amsterdam to Riga uh, which should make for some awesome um, footage and also with the air traffic control overlaid as well um, if we go over to America you see that things over here got very very interesting um, and I'll wait for my rather slow internet connection to catch up. Um, we have awesome coverage for the entire of the United States and this is the reason why that whenever I travel to the States I don't bother with any other way of getting air traffic control because I know that Live ATC has got my back for 95% of the airports that are over there. Um, you have big airports like Dallas-Fort Worth um, down here um, which have, if I can find it, um, I have to zoom in a little bit. There's a lot of airports in the Dallas um, metro area. Um, but we go down here and find Dallas Fort Worth, which is, I think, around about here. So as well, here we go KDFW Tower, regional departure, approach feeders, and all sorts of things like that. And for every other airport around the Dallas area as well. And in America, if you look, you find some little um, towns in the middle of nowhere. Let's find. So let's go in here to Salina in Kansas, which is uh, looks like quite a little town in the middle of not much at all. And even they've got fantastic coverage of their ground tower, ATIS information. We've got the overhead stuff as well uh, of the high level airways too. Um, so in America, as you can see, it is fantastic. There is no reason that you shouldn't use Live ATC to add this into your videos at all um, compared to the other methods that I use. So. Um, if we look over here as well in Asia, I will just point out a few quickly because I know I've got some videos coming up soon from this part of the world too. Um, Seoul has got some fantastic coverage. Tokyo Narita has got some good coverage as well. Um, Australia I've called up on in the past for some videos that I've done. Um, again, great footage down there as well. Great coverage too. Um, so of course you can listen to all of that live in real time, but the real um, reason that Live ATC is awesome for these videos is that you can use the archive feeds as well. And if we go down here on the left hand side of the screen, we can see that there is the ATC audio archives button. And if we click that, this will allow us to basically pick any Live ATC feed from the last 30 days um, and basically download it from any time, any airport that's had coverage on that date. You can go back and pull it off from here. For example, if we go back to the 8th of November, we can find um, basically anywhere from around the world. All of these frequencies that we have here, um, we will find, for example, um, Dallas, Fort Worth, Tower. Um, which is six hours behind the UK so we will just choose it from down here and we'll say right um, if we want traffic from from there at around about 5 p.m. local time um, but because they're six hours behind um, it will actually be 11 o'clock at night um, UTC or GMT and if we hit submit there and you can see that we get a link at the top to download the mp3 file of that 30 minutes worth of footage um, and we also get a nice little weather map for certain airports as well you don't get that in most of them but in the US you do you get like the historic weather for that time and it's just a case of saying right right click and we'll save that link uh, down um, and pop that somewhere safe and there we go there we have it um, and we can just pull that open then and listen to that um, now. 
and let's choose all oh, choices choices what will we use let's use VLC to listen to this um, this is a brilliant um, what I will do with that then with that downloaded file is stick it into Adobe Premiere uh, this is a full flight video that has already been released I'm not giving showing you anything that's um, <laughs> that's coming up in the future not like I've done in the previous videos I'm completely unaware of the fact that I um, share the list of all the upcoming videos recently um, if you look on here then we will find for example what I've, this is one I prepared earlier really um, and what I've done is I've taken in the left hand side here of all of the individual files that are 31 minutes long um, of all of the different centers and all the different frequencies and I've overlaid them into the right place you can generally find where it is um, by essentially tying up the um, when you when it comes to the takeoff clearance and things you can um, generally figure out whereabouts in the video that it is generally supposed to be um, there are more accurate ways I mean I can spend hours making sure it perfectly lines up to the exact millisecond as where it actually is um, although you don't really need to do that that's just me being a little bit pedantic there when I do it but as you can see if I hit play on this bit here um, um, it plays the um, file here as well as the audio in as well it's not playing it on here for some reason I think there's some problem with my capture software that I'm using um, but essentially it's a case of just lining it up in the um, audio file here uh, on the audio tracks here underneath the video um, and it's pretty straightforward as you can see it's essentially a case of going through and you find that at certain points so just here for example in the video um, this bit here is the aircraft being handed over to um, departure um, on, and they give them a certain frequency so what I do then is go back to live ATC here put in the frequency if that frequency is for example 132.4 uh, I don't know what we'll find on that frequency um, we can then go in and head straight to the archives here to pull off whatever frequency that is um, and then listen to the next bit and it's just a case of overlaying that 30 minute file on top of the other one and generally you get a nice little hand, easy handy transition like that uh, so there we've got it again so that's, that'll be them talking to departure that'll be them being handed off from departure um, and then we'll go to the next bit up here which is when they'll be talking to center and it essentially goes on like that they generally get to a point in these videos where you hand off to a center that isn't covered by um, live ATC like right just here we get to this point here and we were handed over to uh, another centre, Albuquerque Centre, which isn't covered by um, Live ATC for the particular sector that we needed. So then it's a case of basically jumping to the next part that you know that it will definitely be contacting. For example, we know that later on on this flight it was going to be contacting um, Dallas-Fort Worth Approach. So we listen to Dallas-Fort Worth Approach and when we find our aircraft again, we've picked up the feed again and then we've got everything tagged on frequency to frequency for the last like half hour of the flight as well. It may, I know I probably made this sound really straightforward. It's a little bit complicated. Uh, it's taken me a long while to get this practice. So um, if it's difficult for you to do at first, then please do bear with it. It does get easier as you um, go forward with it. Uh, we have um, all sorts of different options that we have here um, to listen to different frequencies and things. It's a fantastic website, Live ATC. Uh, absolutely love it. Um, for what I use it for, it um, gets some brilliant, um, brilliant ATC fees for those airports that are actually able to use it. Um, now, like I mentioned earlier, it, there are actually other options available. There's other um, websites that you can use for the other countries, and I sometimes use a radio scanner where it's permitted as well on the flights. And I will be going through all of that in the next couple of videos as well um, to essentially give you the same sort of process that we've done here with live ATC. So I really hope that this video has been handy and useful for you. If you've got any questions, if there's something that I've missed out that you think I should have included, if I've done made a mistake somewhere, please do not hesitate to um, give me a shout in the comments section below um, and I will be happy to chat to you through there. If there's any questions or anything, give me a shout as well.
I'd love to try and help you out with your full flight videos as well with getting the ATC on them. Uh, it's been great talking to you again today, guys, and I hope you've enjoyed this Tech Tuesday. I hope it's been useful for you. If you haven't already done it, I'd love if you could click on that subscribe button on YouTube and um, get my videos as and when they come out. I release four flights, uh, four videos a week now um, with a full flight video every single Friday now. So um, if you hit that subscribe button, you'll get to see them every week as soon as they come out. So I'd love it if you could do that. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch. I will speak to you again soon and keep watching the full flight videos. Thanks. Bye.